play all the double takes. Mm -hmm. Dude, I can't wait to see my mom's face when you start speaking Farsi. I'm not gonna tell her. Yeah, this is a dusta handia man. You get it, switch out, man. I told people eventually when I got comfortable in in Kish, I started telling people I was from Southern Iran because I saw people that really looked like me. Like yeah. my taxi driver was like brown. Yeah. Yeah, and he's like 100% around. People from Abadan? Yeah. The darker. Yeah, Khuzestan, and especially like Bandar Abbas also. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of uh, darker skin. But like Mahia is like white, so white, like it's ridiculous. It's like nine day. Yeah, my mom's, I mean, my mom's white. Yeah. What's funny is my mom is like also super light skinned, even for like like Asian stand or like like Indian standards. Really? Yeah. Hey Heidi, how's it going? Hello. Uh, nice to see you again. Nice to see you as well. How's everything in uh, Osaka today? <laughs> Osaka today is very good. Weather is uh, a little cloudy. Uh huh. Cool. Mm. You know, it's actually it's actually amazing weather here as well. I, I was with my friend. I was uh, walking outside in my city today. And absolutely gorgeous weather. I mean, it's super sunny. Um, there's a light wind, so I think we're both in the same uh, category in terms of having nice days. Um, but it seems uh, like uh, likely cool, right? In yeah, it's it's definitely getting cooler. Yeah, because we're we're towards the end of September now, so fall is uh, going to be starting soon. Or actually, fall has already started, uh, but it doesn't feel like fall. It feels like maybe a nice spring day today. Mm. As yeah. I mentioned before, I. My arm has broken, right? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You told me that yesterday, yeah. Uh, today it's a little better. Uh, last night I could sleep well. Uh huh. Mm. Do you do you feel? Is it the cast that's bothering you when you're sleeping yes. at night? I'm wearing a cast. A cast. So it's quite heavy. Yeah. It's kind of running for my shoulder. <laughs> uh huh. Did they put um? Like a like a metal something inside the cast that's met uh, that's made from metal. Oh, okay. I know. Uh, but it just inside very heavy for my arm. Mhm. Mm yeah. Well, I really hope you feel better. You know, Heidi. I, I was saying yesterday how I never, you know, thankfully I never had that experience of having to go through something like that. But um, yeah, it, it's it can't be easy. I know, especially with uh, all the work that people do. I mean. It's a handicap, right? It definitely slows you down. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So. Problem with my face. My I know face. your face is bruised as well, right? Yeah. I don't yeah. And it's still painful. Mhm. Mm yeah. Well, feel better. I mean, if if there's if you need to go back to the doctor, make sure you do, and uh, you know, maybe <laughs> in a few maybe in a few months everything is will be hopefully in three months everything is back to normal. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. So actually, Heidi, let's get started. Uh, it's about 13 minutes past the hour. I don't want to waste uh, too much time. Uh, today's, the topic of the grammar lesson that we're going to be doing today is actually the difference between do and make, right? Yeah. So in some languages, we actually have um, a distinction between these two verbs. And it's important in English because we use the, the verb do when we are talking about like work, when we are talking about jobs and tasks. Which not which don't necessarily result in the creation of a physical object, mm -hmm. right? So make is, is is a verb that we use in English a lot more when we are discussing physically creating something, right? Mm -hmm. That's when we use make. And do is the performance of an action, of a job, a task, or anything like that, right? So, uh, for example, in English we can ask somebody, you know, have you done your homework, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Or we could say, you know, I don't like doing my job, yeah. right? Because it's a it's a task. Unless your unless your occupation is something that particularly involves creating something, uh, maybe building something, designing something that's a physical object, we wouldn't want to use um, uh, make. We would want to use do, right? So, uh, and it's also used in the context of English to talk about activities in general. That don't really, um, that aren't really specific, right? Mm -hmm. So, like you can say, I don't have all day. I'm very busy. Yes. Right. Uh, don't give me other things to do. 
mm. right? So it's just a generic way to fill in for any task that you might have, right? I have too much to do, right? Yeah. Um, uh, and then, for example, in a, in a restaurant or in a setting where people are serving you, they might say, is there anything I can do to help you? Yeah. Right? So like in a store, somebody can come up to you and say, uh, is there anything I can do for you? Is is there any, is there any way I can uh, help you find something? But you know those are normal things that we hear maybe in a store. So well, give me give me one example, Heidi, of a time when you would use do to either talk about a task or ask a question or do something like that. About that, but oh, for example, I don't have anything to do today. Right? Fantastic, fantastic. I don't have anything to do today, right? If you if it's a weekend, if it's uh you don't have any tasks or activities lined up for your day, you can very easily say, "I don't have anything to do today," right? Yeah. And it's it's a filler, it's kind of a filler verb for all the different activities that you could be doing in a day, right? And other instances, actually, we do use the verb "do" to mention specific things, and this is more from a conversational standpoint where this becomes a little bit more clear. So. Uh, people say that they do their hair, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, I brushed my hair, I combed my hair, it is common in English to say, I did my hair, right? And another example of this is if we look at uh, what people call their appointments when they go to the, when they go to the barber shop, when they go to the hairdresser, they mm -hmm. say that they get a hair, that they have finished their hairdo, right? Mm -hmm. That they've they've had a hairdo that day, or I'm I have an appointment for my hairdo, right? And all that is is the word hair plus the word do, right? So when you get something done to your hair, when it's cut, when it's combed, when it's brushed, we use the verb do in that case, right? Um, women say like I'm going to get my hair done today, mm. right? So that's another specific example when we use do. And other examples when we do di do when we use the word do is for washing the dishes. Yeah. We say in common conversation, uh, "It's my turn tonight to do the dishes." Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So we see the example with hair, and we see the example with dishes, and laundry. the other. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Laundry. Laundry. Exactly. Right. So laundry is another example. What's 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 one way you can say um, what's one way you can use do to describe the laundry, a task in, a, in the laundry? I have to do laundry today. I have to do laundry today. Fantastic, right? It's as simple as that. I have to do laundry today. Um, I have to uh, do the dry cleaning today. Yeah. People say the same thing when it comes to dry cleaning and laundry, right? And in other instances, we say, for, for example, when we have to mow our lawn, we say, I'll do the lawns, mm. right? I, I'll mow the lawn, or I'll do the lawn if you do the dishes, mm. right? Sometimes people compromise. Maybe the husband and wife and the family or the children, they compromise. I'll do this if you do that, mm. right? Talking about tasks in general. So that's what makes it interesting, and that's how we use the, the, the verb do in many different situations. Um, hey, Wilson, how's it going? Hi, Burhan. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. How's uh, how's everything in La Ciudad de Cochabamba? <laughs> um, so far, good. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, what happened for her? I was uh, um, I arrived in time in the class, and you didn't you didn't. Uh, I hadn't come. started it yet. Uh -huh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit of a delay. My my internet was causing problems initially. So sorry about that, um, Wilson. I'll be uh, I'll be on time for my next class as well, actually. So hopefully my internet doesn't uh, make any problems for me. But so we talked very briefly, uh, Wilson, about the importance of the verb do. Um, the the class kind of the grammar topic for today is comparing the verb do with the verb uh, make, right? So have you run across this before, Wilson? For example, when do we use do versus when do we use make? Maybe you have an idea already, and I don't have to repeat. Mm. Make I make I do. Uh -huh. uh, do I usually uh, 
use uh, when I when I'm trying to emphasize some some word. For example, I do believe in God, something like that. Um, and make well, I just use for for uh, just a verb. Mm -hmm. That's a very good way of thinking about it, Wilson. There is another level of complexity in terms of how we use do, however, right? Do and make, the real difference between these two verbs is when we are talking about do, just like you said, it talks about we, it can be used to emphasize belief or it can be used in conjunction with another verb, right? I do believe in God. I do um, practice my English every day, right? It can be used in conjunction with another verb. However, in terms of the, the basic difference between do and make, we use do when we are talking about generic tasks. Uh, for example, activities that you need to finish in a day, chores that you have to do in a day, other kind of duties that you would do in a day, right? And make, the distinction between make and do, make we use more when the result of our action is going to be a physical object, right? So, for example, I make... Um, like, I decided to to make uh, a display for my project, right? So if you're making a display, it's something much more physical. It's something that you can manifest physically that shows that you have done something that is, you know, three-dimensional, that has more, more to it than just a normal task, right? So I like your example, Wilson, that you mentioned here. I do my laundry on the weekends, right, or on weekends. That's a fantastic example of the word of the verb do. There are certain verbs where we use do to describe other verbs. So I do the dishes. I do my laundry. And I was mentioning to Heidi before, I, I, I got my hair done, or I'm going to get a hairdo, right? And these are all examples of when you cut your hair, when you go to the barber, when you get uh, your hair, you know, when you go to a hairdresser, we use the verb to do to describe those situations as well, right? So there are these kind of specific cases, right? Would you be able to give me an example, Wilson, of when you would use, or of an example of either a question or a statement using the verb do? What you said in the in the chat is 100% correct, but give me one more. Okay. Uh, um, I have one. Uh, for example, when I um, doing to my father, um, do I need to pick up my my brother from the from his school? Fantastic. Do I need to pick up my brother from the school, right? But however, even what even in that example, Wilson, do is not, do is not the main verb in that sentence, right? Because you're still All saying right. need to pick up. Yeah. So what about let's try to make a sentence with do being the the principal verb in the sentence. Okay. Just like you had in your example with I do my laundry. Yeah. Okay. Um, mm, I, every day, uh, <clears throat> do, uh, mm, do my, uh, mm, do my task at my job. Could every day, every day I do my tasks at my job, right? Or I perform. Every day I do my job. Oh. Right? I do my job every day. It can be a very simple example too, right? I, I do my job every day. I get my job done every day. Right? So, so these are all ways that we can use. Well, actually, I get my job done. We're not using the verb do. But I do my job every day. Um, you know. And what about another example, Wilson? So let's say you're at a store and somebody comes up to you and asks how they can help you. What is one of the ways that you can use the verb do to describe that? Like, let's say you work in a store, there's a customer that walks in. How can you use do in that uh, to ask the customer if he needs help? Uh, it's a little bit more complex. I can help you, though, if you, have, if you have a question. But I want you to try first. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, what can I do for you, mister? Fantastic. What can I do for you, right? Uh, is there anything I can do to help you? Right? So these are all great ways that we can use do. Right? Do we have any questions on that, guys? Either of you guys, when it comes to the verb do so far? Mm. Uh, and uh, um, For example, when I am... Um, mm, 
when I am uh, mm, running uh, well outside, uh -huh. uh, usually uh, some people say uh, I do uh, I do running. Is it okay? Uh, I do running wouldn't be proper grammar, but I do run would be right. I do run three miles a day. Right. Okay. Okay. Or you can even say some people in the case of exercise, they can say, "I do three miles a day." Like if the conversation is already about exercise, then you can even in common conversation people can say, for example, if you swim, "I do three laps a day." In the pool, right? I do three laps a day. I do three miles a day when it comes to running or something like that. Right. Those are also ways that we can use do if we if the verb is understood from the context of the conversation. Hmm. So there is some flexibility with that. Uh, but in this case, we are using um, simple present or simple past. Can 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 we use an um, mm, uh, uh, future continuous, for example? So future continuous would be what would be an example of that? Uh, I'm uh, okay. Oh, uh, I'm pretty much done with my job. Could be. I'm pretty much done with my job, right? Yeah. Is that future continuous or is that just generic? Uh, uh, yeah, it's present uh, perfect, maybe. Or no, not present perfect, but it would be uh, adjective, I'm, maybe, right? Something yeah, like I'm pretty much done with my job. So in that case, done is the participle. Um, yeah, that's a good that's a good question. Um, it makes sense in English. It's grammatically correct in English. I'm just not sure what form it is. Um, I'm pretty much done with my job because done is your verb. Pretty much is just like a descriptor for how far you've come. And the job is your noun. So I'm pretty much done with my job. That's an interesting one. I think I think in that case it's almost like a, we're using the participle as a way to describe that some task has been completed, right? Or is in the process of being completed. Um, um, sounds like uh, "down" is like an adjective, right? Because it's describing, in this case, mm, yeah. "done." I'm yeah, done. It, it it could be describing the, the the job as well, but it could also be if if it's the adjective, then what's the verb in your sentence? Hmm. You know. I think okay. I think it is the verb, honestly, but it's a it's a special kind of verb. Um, I'm gonna look this up actually. Uh, with this, hmm. Let me take a look at this. Okay. I'm just checking out one thing. Actually, Wilson, let me get back to you. Do you mind if I send you uh, what I find through maybe Facebook? Sure. Okay, fantastic, yeah. That way, because th that's a very interesting question. I'm pretty much done with my job. Breaking that down grammatically, not sure what each of them will show. Uh, pretty much, maybe, even the adverb that's describing the verb done in this case, right? And done is just kind of the participle in its participle form. And then job is the noun. That would be my guess, but we can, we, we'll come back to that. How about sure. that? Sure, no problem. Right. For now. Awesome, great question, though. Um, in the meantime, guys, so we did talk about do. Let's talk about make. So in Spanish, for example, we use the verb hacer for both of them, right? So that's why it's a little bit, uh, it might be something that's a little bit of, uh, of a learning um, process for, you know, for people who speak Spanish. Um, but make we use when we are producing, when, when we are constructing, when we are creating, building something new, right? And we are, when we are talking about composition, for example, materials that something is made from, Right or made of, right? So we can say wine is made from grapes, right? Uh, this purse was made in Italy, right? Uh, her earrings are made of gold, right? Um, and you can talk about physical things that you created. So I made dinner last night for my family. Right? You wouldn't say, I did dinner for my family. I made dinner for my family because it's something that you physically produced. Right? Um, uh, you can say, um, let's say you're preparing for a party. I'll make the arrangements. 
right? I will take care of the arrangements for the party. I will invite the people, you know, organize the, the venue, the location, all that kind of stuff, right? So that's where we use make. And so, Heidi, give me an example of a sentence using make. It can be a normal sentence, it can be a question, whatever you feel. No, ma. Or uh, just you can give me any any example using make um, in a sentence. Make plan or make speech. Yeah, so what's a sentence using make plan that you can use? I'm making plan today. I'm making a plan today? Oh, mm. Yeah, sure. What, what, what would be the complete sentence? I, I'm making plan for uh, next vacation. I'm making plans for my next vacation. Right? Fantastic. So you're making a plan, you're coming up with the ideas, and even though the, the result is not something physical, in the case of planning, we do use the verb make. Right? So in, in, in other instances we use that we use make, we're creating something physical. Or we are talking about the composition of something. Um, for example, making a decision. That's another that's another phrase that we use a lot in English. Make a decision, right? Even though a decision may not be physical, we are using the verb make in that decision, or in using with the noun uh, decision, right? Wilson, can you give me an example of another sentence using the verb make? Mm. Mm. Can I can I make you a cup of coffee? Can I make you a cup of coffee? Fantastic. And why did you use make there instead of do? Um, mm, mm, because it's not uh, mm, it's not uh, 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 a task that uh, I will do every day. So, yeah. Uh huh. Not only that, but didn't you produce something? Didn't you prepare something that's physical? Okay. Yeah. Right. So coffee is physical, right? Tea, coffee, whatever you make in the kitchen. Those are all examples of. Uh, nouns that are physically created or are made, you know. By the way, what yeah. uh, is is it okay to say also? Can I uh, can I build you a uh, and can I build uh, you a cup of coffee? No, it wouldn't be build, right? Because build specifically, we are using we use in English for like a construction project or something that like you're building a building. You're building a stadium. You're building. You can even say building a project, right? But we don't want to use it for food. Uh, for and what's another verb we can use in in the place of build, maybe? Hmm. And also in the place of make. What's another verb we can use when we talk about food? Create. Can I create you a cup of coffee? <laughs> no, that doesn't work either, Wilson. Try try one more time. Oh. Hmm. Create is still very like technical, right? It's it's like building something, creating something. What about prepare? Prepare, right? Can I prepare a glass of coffee for you? That still sounds very formal. Mm -hmm. uh, make is really the most colloquial, the most uh, conversationally appropriate. Can I make yeah, you a glass of coffee? I'm something confused sometimes. Yeah, because uh, in my area, in my field, uh, for example, I saw some examples where uh, it says uh, make uh, a project or build a project. So we can use we can use build and make for project. We actually can. So for me personally, I like the verb design for a project or create for a project. Let's create this project. Let's build this project. Let's design this project. Right. Depends on the project. I mean, if the project is resulting in something physical, then maybe make is more appropriate, right? So mm -hmm. maybe you work in architecture and you want to make a model of your building. Let's make a model, right? Or let's let's make a design of our plans, right? Those are all appropriate ways to use the verb make. Um, but depending on the context, build could also work. Build or create could also work. Okay. Yeah. It, it, do you have a specific example, maybe Wilson, that you were thinking about that maybe you wanted to know what the right verb would be? Well, it's a simple example. I think it's a 
a software a software project. So uh, I I used to see some tutorials and and uh, usually uh, begins with uh, the sentence of uh, I'll make the project, I'll create the project from the scratch. For example. Yeah, you know what? The fact that you said from scratch changes everything. When we use from scratch in English, we use make. Or for, we can also, actually I'm going to catch myself now, we do sometimes also use do. Right? Mm. I'll do it from scratch, I'll make it from scratch. We use both of these verbs when it comes to the phrase from scratch. Make is more appropriate, I think, in, in more situations. But okay, it is yeah. possible to hear both. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I understood. Yeah. It is confusing. Yeah, these, especially depending on the context of what we are talking about, it, it does make... Uh, it does make <laughs> there are situations when we can make uh, uh, some exceptions to the rule, right? And another thing I wanted to mention, guys, about make. So we can say make, for, for example, food that you're creating. I, my mother make to, made a cake. Uh, my mother baked a cake. My mother made a cake, right? Make can be used for baking, for cooking. Uh, sh I made dinner, right? She made a cup of tea, right? You can also use make for comments, for like I made a comment at, my, at the lecture, with the professor. I made a comment, right? Um, Obama made a speech, right? For speech, for, for comments, for when, it, when we're talking about speaking or when we're talking about sharing an idea, we can use make for those. We can also use make for making noise. Like, why is she making so much noise, right? Maybe someone is really loud at night. Why is she making so much noise? So we use make for those examples as well. And there are, it's, it is situationally dependent. You know, it depends on the context of what you're trying to say as well as what the end result is. If it's something physical, if it's a food item, we normally use make. If it's something that's more abstract, that is more a task, a job, then we generally go with the verb do. Any questions on those guys? Oh, okay, so Wilson, you have, I did make myself a sandwich. <clears throat> Perfect. Perfect. Okay. That works, right? You, or I made myself a sandwich. I made, okay. I made myself a sandwich, right? Will you make me a sandwich? Maybe you ask uh, your mother or somebody else, you know, will you make me a sandwich? Right? Talking about a food item, so we use make. Okay. Any questions on that, guys, so far? I'm going to jump into the article if we don't have any questions. No questions. Okay. Wilson, what about you? I'm okay. Okay. Fantastic. Well, I think when we come across some of the questions that we are going to read about, it might be easier for you guys to come up with uh, some... Or once we read the article, it might be easier for you guys to come up with some questions. So let's take a look at the article for today. And it's actually interesting because... When we look at certain cultures of the world, a lot of my articles focus on cultural exploration. There are some societies in the world where drinking and driving is actually a big problem, right? And one of the societies that we look at today is uh, in, in South Asia, so specifically in Pakistan, there are um, social, it's a social taboo to drink. It's a conservative society and it's also a Muslim country, so it is a difficult place for someone who wants to consume alcohol, right? Uh, alcohol is something that uh, religiously conservative Muslims don't drink, right? And so Pakistan is a conservative country for the most part. So people who are not conservative in Pakistan sometimes have problems when they uh, try to do the activities, like when they try to do when they try to drink, when they try to um, take part in activities that are more Western, maybe, right? So I'm going to also screen share so you guys can see my screen. Do you guys uh, see the article yourselves by any chance? It's a Global Post article. Yeah, it's open. Okay, fantastic. Heidi, you can see it as well? I, I opened the link. Okay, fantastic. So let's start with this then. Drinking and driving in Pakistan? Question mark. 
there is no shortage of alcohol in Karachi. Karachi is the largest city in Pakistan. If you're determined, well connected, and have enough money, it's easy to get your hands on anything and everything. Just don't let the Rangers catch you. Okay, so we're gonna learn what the Rangers are. Karachi, Pakistan. There's no shortage of alcohol in Karachi. If you're determined, well connected, and have enough money, it's easy to get everything. It's easy to get your hands on anything and everything. From 12-year-old Ballantines to Pakistan's own Marais Classic Lager. What is in short supply, however, is a place to drink openly. For as long as I can remember, my family is my family has been going to French Beach, a private stretch of sand outside Karachi where urbanites get away from the city. It's nothing fabulous as far as beaches are concerned. The sea has trash in it, the sand is coarse, and since it's still a, in a conservative Muslim country, I have to wear a t-shirt and board shorts before I can even think about swimming. However, it's an exclusive getaway spot, one that's increasingly become a place for young Pakistanis to pull out their liquor and relax. Perhaps it's for this reason that the road to the beach has become littered with Sindh, Sindh is the province in Pakistan where the city of Karachi is, has become littered with Sindh Rangers, a paramilitary force used for any task Karachi police are considered too incompetent to accomplish. They stand in flak jackets with their AK-47s, motioning for cars to pull over. If you're unlucky enough to be stopped, the rangers will search every inch of your vehicle for contraband. If they find a bottle of alcohol, you're out of luck. No one I've met has managed to sneak, has managed to squeak away with the bribe. Often they're jailed or have to pay a hefty fine instead. Recently, my father and I were pulled over by rangers for one of these random terror-inducing checks. We had no alcohol with us. I wouldn't dream of traveling in my father's car with contraband, but the ranger insisted on unscrewing the cap of the two water bottles we had in the car to take giant whiffs. I'd heard plenty of stories of people getting pulled over in Pakistan. Still, the idea that we could be pulled over without having done anything out of the ordinary was something I had a hard time understanding. I've lived most of my life in the United States where search and seizure laws mean this, this kind of military-influenced influ moral compassing would likely not be possible. As my father and I stood on the side of the road and the ranger inspected my water bottle, I felt angry that I live in a place where I can't drive to the beach without a khaki-clad man with a gun snuff, sniffing my beverages. Then the ranger asked me how my father and I are related. My father quickly answered that I am his daughter. I'm going to need to see some identification, the ranger said. My father pulled out his wallet, and I began searching inside my purse. We both produced our national identity cards. Mine clearly states my father's name in addition to mine. The ranger checked to see if the names matched, then let us back in the car. We can skip this part right here. Um, and this right here is also not really that important, but let's start here. Afterward, I wondered if what he had done was technically legal. Was, and was there a law in Pakistan that said I couldn't have been in the car with someone who was simply a friend? A lawyer friend helped me with the answer. No, there isn't. Only men and women who are physically touching in public can be stopped and asked to prove their relationship. By the way, my friend said, that random spot check for alcohol is illegal as well. Right? So, Wilson, what's your reaction to this? article. Tell me what you think. Uh, for me it's incredible. Uh, I don't think that I can uh, uh, cope with those uh, with those problems uh, in that, that country. So, and my country is, is very... There, there are a lot of freedom on that. I mean uh, you can you can drink alcohol while you're driving. Of course, there are many accidents, and it's uh, responsible to do that. But uh, it's a, it's part of our culture. Uh, for example, on weekends, in the evenings, uh, to to drink some alcohol with friends. But uh, sometimes you uh, you um, go uh, to the countryside. And, and it's so far, and sometimes you you need to 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 bring your car 
So mm -hmm. in that case, what can I? What can you do if you are with your friends, with your culture? You have to you have to drink alcohol, uh, and you and you can com control that. Uh, sometimes, uh, I mean, if I am if I have a car, I have to uh, to limit my my drink my drinking, but. Uh, uh, usually it doesn't 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 happen that so you sometimes you you are something drunk mm -hmm. and you are getting back home uh, mm -hmm. in that uh, state so yeah it's you, you can see that it's uh, it, it, there's no problem right mm -hmm. but there are some policies around the the road maybe you can get arrested but uh, it's not. It's it's very improbable that happens. Mm -hmm. It's very improbable, Wilson. Great job, but just this one word. Impro uh, it's very improbable, right? Yeah. So I mean, Heidi, do you think it's fair for law enforcement to do this to their own people? I mean, in Pakistan, this seems to be normal. These rangers are just stopping whoever they want. Mm. Japan is very free. Uh, sometimes it's freer than America. Uh -huh. They can do anything, or even uh, politics. They can't bring into uh, the uh, politics, uh, the religion. Mm -hmm. It's bad by uh, constitution. So if some someone said uh, uh, it's banned by Buddhism, but it's not good, maybe we can sue that to the court. I w I win. I win. Mm -hmm. And the uh, politics, politics are separated completely. Religion and politics are completely separated. Separated, completely. Uh -huh. Idea. Yeah. Separation of church and state. That's how we actually in the U.S. when we talk about how religion and government are separated, we call it the separation of church and state, right? Sometimes, uh, even America, they bring uh, some religious, religious uh, idea. Uh, into politics, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, we are still um, wrestling, or struggling with that idea of what, when does religion stop, and when does the government start? You know, uh, we have a lot of um, politicians in the United States who are conservative. I mean, they are from families with very Christian, very religious backgrounds, and when they see the society, the liberal society getting to the point where those liberal society's values no longer apply or no longer fit very well into their understanding of uh, values, then there is, there's friction, right? The, the two sides start to um, dislike each other, right? And it's a problem. I mean, uh, many parts of the country geographically, um, not to label an entire location, but usually the southern United States from Texas to Virginia we call this the Bible Belt mm. you know the Bible Belt is the most conservative part of the country a lot of religious people a lot of religious schools um, seminaries uh, you know and people there have a more conservative background the north the northeast is not the same Christian rule? Oh no, I mean freedom of religion is guaranteed throughout the country, it's in the constitution so you, we, we don't have to follow any religion. In the US you can have a religion, you can not have a religion, you can believe in peanut butter, you can believe in sushi. <laughs> Nobody cares. If you want to make sushi your god, you can make sushi your god. Right? Mm -hmm. nobody, nobody cares. Uh, but in certain societies, of course, there's social pressure to become religious or to become a certain religion, and yeah. Banned by uh, church, right? Divorce. What's banned? What's banned by church? Uh, Divorce. Yeah. No. Uh huh. Well, that's the thing, right? The the government is still a non-religious government, right? The United States is a secular country, so uh, divorce is legal everywhere. Um, right. If you want to get divorced out of your church. Like church, let's say divorce, right? some churches do. Mm -hmm. So some churches are much more restrictive in the divorce policies than other churches. 
Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, for example, uh, there are a lot of Jewish people in the United States, and even within individual religions, divorce is discouraged. How about right? abortion? Oh, abortion is a major issue. Mm -hmm. uh, things are, it's a religious issue, it's a social issue, and in the United States we have, uh, the, it's complex in the United States because states have their own laws, mm -hmm. and it's actually different because the, the federal government, I don't think, uh, has the authority to say abortion is illegal, abortion is legal. Uh, the states decide. Mm -hmm. Individual states decide. So if a state happens to be more conservative, then divorce or then abortion is usually illegal in those states because the majority of people are religious. Much freer than America. Yeah, I mean, if if the definition of free is you can do what you want and religion will not interfere, mm. then yeah, I think that in that case, Japan and many other societies in Europe maybe are much more free than the United States. Yeah, so right. Muslim is very strange for Japanese. They banned. Uh, they banned a lot of things, particularly female. Uh huh. Driving was banned before. Yeah, driving is still banned in like Saudi Arabia, right? Yeah, female. And uh, she was drinking alcohol, it's banned. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, drinking alcohol is also banned, yeah. And, but yeah. Just, just in Saudi Arabia, though, Saudi Arabia is really kind of a, a special example. Um, Pakistan is also very conservative. I would say maybe after. Maybe among all the non-Arab Muslim countries, Pakistan is probably the most conservative non-Arab Muslim country. Mm. Like my country, uh, people from Bangladesh, 85% mm. uh, population is Muslim. Mm. Oh. We, yeah, we don't care. Like I'm Muslim. I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm not a crazy, you know, religious I person. <laughs> Oh, no, actually, no, I'm Muslim, but 85% uh, of uh, people in Bangladesh are Muslim, about 10% are, are Hindus, and the remaining 5% are, we have Buddhists, we have Christians, we have every, every religion, right? Uh, we are much more free. We don't care. I mean, uh, India is also much more free. Pakistan is much more conservative, honestly, yeah. This early, t your, uh, early month, uh, January or February, I forgot. Uh, in uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, one uh -huh. uh, guy, young guy, was deported from the Saudi Arabia because religious police said he's very far handsome, too handsome. Oh yeah, I heard that article. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw that article. <laughs> very strange. He was considered too handsome for the women in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, that's right. So mm -hmm. he was deported from Saudi Arabia. But, but, but that's a good problem to have. <laughs> <laughs> I would not want to be deported because I'm too ugly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, that would be bad. But yeah, we do see these, we do see these specific situations, right? Mm -hmm. And it is, it is difficult. Uh, Saudi Arabia is a very special case. Very special case. Yeah. I mean, Islam... As a religion, there are Muslims of every color, every language, every background. There are Muslims in China. There are Muslims in Turkey. There are Muslims in Africa. You know, every possible background. And we, many of us, millions and millions of us, are much more relaxed. Mm. You know, my mom doesn't wear a scarf. My mom... Oh, my mom drives. Yeah, she doesn't care. Uh, um, she, my sister, never wore a scarf in her life. My, my dad doesn't have a beard. You know, I mean, we were much more relaxed, right? So, there is a difference. Yeah, uh, Wilson, to answer your question, welcome back. Um, you asked if there are a lot of Mormons in the U.S. So, Mormonism is a religion that is a relatively new religion, and yes, uh, the state of Utah. Okay, so. Utah is a state in the western United States, close to Nevada, close to Colorado, close to that part of the country. Utah has a very high population of Mormons, yes. Um, their, their base, their religious headquarters is in uh, Salt Lake City, and uh, they have a lot of Mormons there. So yeah, we do have a lot of Mormons. Yeah, there are many yeah, Mormons I have... in Japan. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, came from Utah. Yeah, no, Utah is big, and they have a lot of uh, missionaries who go everywhere in the world. They travel everywhere in the world. Yeah, Wilson, go ahead. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, there are there are some 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 people that are from USA that are Mormons, missionaries, 
uh, that I know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, Los Mormones, uh, they, they have a very interesting um, outlook when it comes to life. They're very, um, they, they, it's a new religion, and they are really very active in language learning, very active in um, bringing more members into their religion. The, the, best, the best language schools in the U.S. <laughs> outside the CIA are uh, all, uh, are many of the Mormon um, missionaries, their university, the main kind of university for Mormons is uh, BYU, right. Brigham, Young. Yeah. Yeah, Brigham, Brigham Young. Yeah, Brigham Young University in, um, in Salt Lake City uh, is, a, is a very big Mormon uh, standard, very uh, established with their church. And they have amazing programs in language, um, you know, Spanish, French, Japanese, Chinese. Uh, they do a lot of language learning, so very, very strong focus. Strong focus on travel, mm, great as well. Yeah, so very uh, well, well rounded. Um, the other, okay, so guys, I, I, we were talking about a lot of stuff, but do you guys think that? I mean, how can people? defend themselves from unfair police actions. We see what the, we saw with this example in the article that this girl was hassled. She was with her father in a car and she had water with her and they opened the water bottle. They were smelling, oh, maybe this is vodka or whatever, right? Um, how can people defend themselves from these kind of actions? What can they do in, in a difficult society? Nothing. <laughs> They shouldn't hmm. get any alcohol. <laughs> they shouldn't drink any alcohol, okay. Uh, what if, I mean, the, the person said that when she talked to her lawyer friend, the lawyer said uh, the police were acting illegally, right? Hmm. So what can we do about that? Is there another solution maybe? Wilson, you said nothing. What do you mean by that? Well, because there, there, uh, there are a lot of cor corruption in the country, so yeah, it's impossible to con to to um, mm, I don't know to uh, to uh, not suffer these problems. Mm -hmm. Heidi, did you say something? I'm sorry. Give some money to the police. Yeah, if you can, you can always bribe the cops, right? But uh, they did say the. The woman who wrote the article did say that she has never heard of anybody who has been able to successfully bribe a ranger. <laughs> <laughs> They'll probably get more angry <laughs> that uh, you're offering them money, right? But you know, Wilson, I think you hit the nail on the head. I think the problem is corruption. You know, you don't have a process of of justice. I mean, if you want justice, you have to go through a corrupt system. Uh, you know, if you are, yeah, it's it's complicated. Even if you are, you know, and uh, all the people know that you are innocent, you can uh, finish uh, being uh, the culprit. Cause is it okay to say culprit? Culprit, yeah, the victim in this, or the the, the culprit is the is the yeah. In this case, it can be victim also, I guess, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's incredible sometimes the. The justice in some countries, mm -hmm. yeah. or the absence of justice in some countries, right? Yeah, yeah. The lack right. of justice in some countries, right? It's it is incredible. I mean, Bangladesh actually used to be part of Pakistan. Uh, so, so you know, my country we became independent uh, in 1971, but from 1947 to 1971, for uh, 24 years, we were part of Pakistan and. Boy, are we glad we left. You know, uh, we are so happy we left. Um, it was a very bloody war of independence, um, but the our values, people in my country, even though we are Muslim, and culturally we are similar in many ways to Pakistan, we could not tolerate a religious society. You know, so we left. I mean... Uh, <laughs> And in, Bang in Bangladesh, yeah, sure, it's conservative. Maybe some areas you don't want to drink alcohol. I mean, I, I would, I'm sure even in Bolivia, you wouldn't go to a priest drunk. 
you know, uh, there's a level of respect, you know, that we should always have uh, knowledge about. But yeah, Pakistan is still struggling with a lot of these issues, I think. Do you drink alcohol? I don't drink alcohol, no, but that's just personal decision never. on my part. Never. Never. I never drank oh, alcohol. Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, I hear it tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> but but I don't I don't know I've never tasted it unfortunately or maybe fortunately I don't know in the U.S. we have a lot of people who are I mean alcoholics are everywhere so people are there's a cultural push to be responsible with alcohol a lot of young people are not some people are so it's difficult I've kind of stayed away from it I don't see much value in doing something like that. Maybe because my family, we never drank alcohol in my house. It was just never something we had in our house, so I don't miss anything. <laughs> right. Anyway, guys, any other questions about the lesson? I know it's about to, about time to start my next class. Hopefully my internet works well. And uh, any other questions? I know do and make were the two big things that we talked about, as well as uh, this topic about drinking in Pakistan. But any other questions that we had? Uh, no questions. Okay, no, thanks, Adi. for him. Awesome, Wilson. Thanks a lot. And if you guys are, if you guys want to join me for another hour, class is starting right now. Yeah. Okay. Thank for him. Alrighty. Bye. See you guys soon. Yeah. Bye. 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 Take care. Bye. Yeah. Right. So, like in a store, somebody can come up to you and say, uh, "Is there anything I can do for you? Is is there any, is there any way I can uh, help you find something?" But you know, those are normal things that we hear maybe in a store. So. Well, give me give me one example, Heidi, of a time when you would use do to either talk about a task or ask a question or do something like that. Uh, but that, but, uh, for example, I don't have anything to do today. Right? Fantastic, fantastic. I don't have anything to do today, right? Yeah. If you if, if it's a weekend, if it's uh you don't have any tasks or activities lined up for your day, you can very easily say I don't have anything to do today. Right, yeah. and it's it's a filler. It's kind of a filler verb for all the different activities that you could be doing in a day, right? And other instances, actually, we do use the verb do to mention specific things, and this is more from a conversational standpoint where this becomes a little bit more clear. So, uh, people say that they do their hair, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, I brushed my hair, I combed my hair, it is common in English to say, I did my hair. They all the double takes. Mm -hmm. Dude, I can't wait to see my mom's face when you start speaking Farsi. I'm not going to tell her. This is a dooster hand, dear man. Dude, I can't wait to see I told people, eventually, when I got comfortable in, in Kish, I started telling people I was from southern Iran. Because I saw people that really looked like me. Like yeah. My taxi driver was like brown. Yeah. Yeah, and he's like 100% around. People from Abadan? Yeah. The darker. Yeah, Khuzestan, and especially like Bandar Abbas also. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of uh, darker skin. But like Mahia is like white, so white, like it's ridiculous. It's like nine day. Yeah, my mom's. I mean, my mom's white. Yeah. What's funny is my mom is like also super light skinned, even for like, like Asian stand or like like Indian standards. Really? Yeah. Hey Heidi, how's it going? Hello. Uh, nice to see you again. Nice to see you as well. How's everything in uh, Osaka today? <laughs> Osaka today is very good. Weather is uh, a little cloudy. Uh huh. Cool. Mm. You know, it's actually it's actually amazing weather here as well. I I was with my friend. I was. Uh, Walking outside in my city today, in absolutely gorgeous weather. I mean, it's super sunny. Um, there's a light wind, so I think we're both in the same uh, category in terms of having nice days. Um, but it seems uh, like uh, likely cool, right? In yeah, it's it's definitely getting cooler. Yeah, because we're we're towards the end of September now, so fall is uh, going to be starting soon. Or actually, fall has already started, uh, but it doesn't feel like fall. It feels like maybe a nice spring day today. As yeah. I mentioned before, I, my arm was broken, right? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You told me that yesterday, yeah. Uh, today it's a little better. Uh, last night I could sleep well. Uh huh. Mm. 
Do you do you feel? Is it the cast that's bothering you when you're sleeping at night? I'm wearing the cast. A cast. No, it's quite heavy. Yeah. It's kind of muscles running for my shoulder. <laughs> uh huh. Did they put um like a like a metal something inside the cast that's met uh, that's made from metal? Oh, okay. Uh, but it just said very heavy for my arm. Mm hmm Yeah. Well, I really hope you feel better, you know, Heidi. I, I was saying yesterday how when we are discussing physically creating something, right, mm -hmm. that's when we use make. And do is the performance of an action, of a job, a task, or anything like that, right? So, uh, for example, in English we can ask somebody, you know, have you done your homework, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Or we could say, you know, I don't like doing my job, yeah. right? Because it's a it's a task. Unless your unless your occupation is something that particularly involves creating something, uh, maybe building something, designing something that's a physical object, we wouldn't want to use um, uh, make. We would want to use do, right? So, uh, and it's also used in the context of English to talk about activities in general. That don't really, um, that aren't really specific, right? Mm -hmm. So, like you can say, I don't have all day. I'm very busy. Yeah. Right. Uh, don't give me other things to do. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's just a generic way to fill in for any task that you might have. Right. I have too much to do. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, and then, for example, in a, in a restaurant or in a setting where people are serving you. They might say, "Is there anything I can do to help you?" I never, you know. Thankfully, I never had that experience of having to go through something like that. But um, yeah, it, it's it can't be easy. I know, especially with uh, all the work that people do. I mean, it's a handicap, right? It definitely slows you down. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So. Problem with my face. But I know your face is bruised as well, right? Yeah. I don't yeah. Know, and it's still painful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, feel better. I mean, if if there's if you need to go back to the doctor, make sure you do, and uh, you know, maybe in a few maybe in a few months everything is will be hopefully in three months everything is back to normal. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. So actually, Heidi, let's get started. Uh, it's about 13 minutes past the hour. I don't want to waste uh, too much time. Uh, today's the topic of the grammar lesson that we're going to be doing today is actually the difference between do and make. Right. Yeah. So. In some languages, we actually have um, a distinction between these two verbs, and it's important in English because we use the the verb do when we are talking about like work, when we are talking about jobs and tasks, which not which don't necessarily result in the creation of a physical object, mm -hmm. right? So make is, is is a verb that we use in English a lot more.